let's just look inside and let's basically push every button. Uh, and, and I can't stress this enough. Push every button because you don't know if there's one there that doesn't work. Any button that you find at this point, start the car up, push them all, check them all. Make sure they're all doing something. Okay, now we're inside the vehicle. Let's start it up. Check on the dash. Look for any check engine lights, any lights that stay on. Um, also the mileage. This one's got 164,000. During your inspection while the car is running, uh, just get a look at what's coming out of the tailpipe. Uh, take this with a grain of salt um, because if there's a lot of white smoke that comes out of there, particularly if it's a cold day, this will be normal. I mean, steam coming out of the exhaust is completely normal. Water dripping out of the exhaust is also normal. Uh, you want to sort of look for like blue smoke. That, that's an indication that the engine may have an issue. So just, like I said, just put your eyes back there and, and after you've gone in your test drive, if, if you notice there's still a lot of white smoke and it's not a cold day or anything, this might clue you into a, a bigger problem. But be observant. So for me, I take a systematic approach to this. Um, maybe just go from left to right to make sure everything works. I'm gonna try the window. This has an auto function, so it should, after you pull it down, go down by itself, and it does. So check that. Passenger side. That one works. Passenger rear. Driver's rear. Check the door locks. Make sure they work. And here's another tip. Don't just try the switches at the driver's door. Try them everywhere. Now this is a lock to make sure that nobody can operate any switches but you. So this would mean that all these other windows should be locked out, except for yours. The drivers, that is. And those are back. Okay, I've gone ahead and turned, uh, turned the uh, engine off, because I really don't need it. But let's also uh, try the mirrors out. This has electric mirrors. If you have them, great. If you have uh, mirror heaters, these can be a little tougher to check, but if if you turn the heater on and you don't see like some indicator, like a light or something that comes on along with it, it could indicate that there's a problem there. But those meters are supposed to, those mirrors are supposed to get hot. So if you turn those on and leave them on for a bit and then put your hand on them to feel if they're warm, uh, that could tell you whether or not those are working. But with this, there's a rocker switch for left and right. Let's try the left. That one works. Okay, let's try the right. I'm trying to go through the full range of travel. This one sounds a little sick, but it does work. Let's not forget the horn. That works. And now let's check the lights. And super is a little weird in that you gotta have the, the key on. I just discovered to uh, turn the lights on, so check uh, the parking lights and the headlights and to see if the brights come on and off. You also want to, uh, I just leave them on, check the turn signals. And you also want to check this outside the car, so having a buddy around is going to be very helpful with this. Uh, this looks like the dimmer switch for this vehicle. Also it has a fog light switch, so you want to activate that and see if those work as well. And as long as we're checking lights and we're going to be outside checking them, it's a good idea to check the reverse lights. So um, this is really easy to do, especially with the vehicle off. Just pull the parking brake up. And then many vehicles you have to step on the brake pedal uh, in order to get it to come out of park. And then just slip it down into the reverse position. Uh, and once again, make sure you've got the parking brake set when you do this. And you can go out and check the reverse lights and see if those are operating. And in addition, um, 
this the, the dimmer switch that we're working here you want to make sure that that works not just there but on the radio and everywhere else if not that could be an issue and while you're at it don't forget to check all the brake lights too um, there's three of them these days so make sure all three brake lights are working as long as we're checking lights we should also check the hazards observant viewers will note this switch right here on top of the steering column what the heck is it well I checked the owner's manual and this switch turns on the parking lights <laughs> it's weird that Subaru doesn't let you turn the headlights on without the key but it does give you this parking light switch so here's something we can also make sure that it works and now we're working our way right now let's check to see if our wipers work um, it looks like for these you push to have the squirters and make make sure that the uh, squirters also work which these looks like you pull looks like we're not getting even the sound of a motor working when I'm working the switch but the wipers themselves are moving which is good there's the intermittent function here's low and high you also want to check the rear windshield wiper and washer this one's a squirt make sure it turns on Well, that looks good. Over here we've got the cruise control, which we'll try when we're out on the road, on our road test. But the rear defroster, which does not appear to be working. It's on. Okay, there might be something going on there. It should, there's a light that should come on and stay on. Maybe there's an issue there. I just went out so maybe maybe there's something going on with the rear defroster this is just the that's interesting well, this is what you want to find out now before you buy the vehicle all right now we're going to start it up again and test the HVAC first thing to check is a blower motor to see if it works on all speeds there's one and a lot of times if you turn on the vent, you can actually feel with your hand. So I've got it in vent right now. A little more. Okay, it works on all speeds. Um, don't want to try the air out yet. This is the recirculation. So you're, you're listening for something to move inside the dash and perhaps you could feel the airflow change when doing this. Okay, I did hear something change. So this is the recirculate. Now try all the different modes. This is vent, and I can feel it coming out the vent. And check all the vents, not just the one near you. And note that on many, you can actually turn the vent on and off. So you can see this one, there's like a little X here. So make sure the vent is open when you're checking it. Also, move it around. Make sure nothing's broken down in there. And hopefully airflow will be consistent. Okay. Let's change. Should be some coming out the floor here. In addition, I do feel a little bit there. That's completely floor. I feel it coming out there. Most of the time floor vents are down underneath the glove box like this. Or down underneath the uh, uh, driver's footwell here. Uh, here's a combination of defrost and uh, floor and note that when you uh, many times when you select a frost it may actually activate the air conditioning this is the way it's supposed to work so check to see if you have airflow out the defroster which I do here and then also out the floor 
which I also do. And this is full defrost, which you can definitely hear. All right, now, huh, this is the one everybody wants to know. Does the air work? Uh, best way to check these is through the vents. Push the AC button. It's a good sign that it lights up, and you obviously put it in cold. It's a good sign that it lights up, but I have my doubts. So let's go out and check to see if that AC compressor is kicking on. Okay, this is the AC compressor here on the front. You can see it's belt driven. There's a belt going to it, and it's going around but the clutch is not engaging. If this clutch was engaging, this whole assembly would click and this whole thing would spin and the engine idle would also change. So it's kind of looking to me like uh, the AC is not working on this vehicle. It's important to find this out now because AC repairs can get very, very expensive. All right, we know the AC doesn't work, so let's just turn that off. Okay, now that you've checked the AC's function, let's check the heater function and let's just take the temperature slider slide it over to hot and actually I'm feeling immediate heat here which is good so you want to make sure that you're able to switch between cold and warm and I am we're good there it's like we've got a cup holder here it's interesting it works dirty but it works how about the radio Um, let's just take this out. Okay, I did notice that there was a uh, radio antenna on this car that needs to be pulled up manually. Let's do that and see if we got radio then. This is what I was talking about. Um, something like this, whew, you gotta be careful that you don't drive through the car wash like this. So, <laughs> looks like somebody might have already done that but I'm not hearing any change. So we may, have, we may have an issue with the radio antenna here. As long as we're on the subject of antennas, let's talk a second about power antennas. Make sure it works, but I think one of the main reasons power antennas have gone away is because they are such a pain in the butt, especially on uh, vehicles that are in the uh, rust belt. Um, I, I, I'll just say this. If you see a power antenna and it's not working, always expect it to cost more than you think it will because a lot of times it's the actual tube or the motor assembly or something like that that gets damaged. And if that's the case, then you have to go in there and take the whole assembly out, either replace it or fix it. So if you got a power antenna, uh, make sure that it works. And if it doesn't work, you can replace them with mechanical versions um, that either you manually pull up and down or like those rubber whip things. Uh, those might be a less expensive alternative, but once again, you're trying to assess the condition of the vehicle before you purchase it. So, power antennas, beware. Well, there we go. When nuclear power is on the line, All right. they're watching YouTube and checking. Let's try the fader just to see where the speakers go. Crisis going on in the information age. They have no information. There we go. Guy Rizdal Fukushima Daiichi, and what we didn't know. Next time on Marketplace Base. from APM American Public Media. Listen to Marketplace tonight at six thirty on ninety one point seven. So the, these have a function where you you can pull it out, and I imagine this is balance. Seems like balance. This would be treble. This is Talk of the Nation from NPR News. I'm John Donvan. We're talking about the recent reports that the New York police uh, were mapping okay. and doing surveillance on Muslim communities. Now, I don't, have, I don't have a cassette, so I can't really try that out. But we can Bart check to see if there's also AM, which is also equally important. You want to make sure that that works. They provide initial bonus which it does. Guaranteed lifetime income options. I don't know what that is. is so. choice, Switching back and forth from clock. Brown, uh, looks like I'm going to have to reset the clock on this. Okay. Well, the radio works. Ashtray or coin tray or whatever you want to call it. Uh, oh, yeah. Look to see if the vehicle's been smoked in. If it has, uh, that could also. Um, this one obviously hasn't hasn't even been used um, back in the day when they actually put those lighters in there um, glove box 
Another thing that I was pleased to see when I got this, this is the original sticker for this. Um, in fact, when this thing was new, as it sits, was 22,602 US. Um, also, super happy to see that I have my owner's manual because these things, I actually did a video about this. It's called Free Money. Uh, I check it out and about my opinions on that. Also, it looks like, you know, the original book that came with this. So, that's, that's cool. And sometimes as far as radios go, there could be a radio code or something like that that's needed on some newer systems. They have security systems for that very kind of, that very thing. Uh, so make sure you've got a radio code because if, if it's required, if you don't you ever disconnect the battery, you're going to be kind of hosed and you may have to go through the dealership in order to get your radio to work again. Also with the glove box, make sure it closes. Some of these might not want to close like they're supposed to. Also, while we're at it, just jiggle the mirror around, see if that works like it's supposed to, and some of these have auto dimmer functions. Make sure it's attached, make sure, hey, how's it going? Make sure it's attached, make sure it sits there. Uh, if you have a sunroof, now would be the time to check to see if that works, whether it's mechanical or, or electric. Uh, check the visors to make sure they work move them around make sure they stay up I've had cars where and sometimes there's supposed to be a light here uh, I've had cars that these would fall down in your face and that was a real pain um, now's a good time to also check the dome light see if it works it does there's the door function let me close the door give it a few seconds some of these are on a delay. It might take like 30 seconds or so for it to shut off. Or actually, let me. Oh, sorry about that. Let me take the key out. And make sure it works like it's supposed to. Because there may be something going on there if that stays on and does not turn on and off like it's supposed to. So if you find a dome light that's off and does not work when you open and close doors as it should, it looks like it wanted to there. But we'll give it about 30 seconds, and in about 30 seconds, it should start to go off. And this this is also specific to model, but this is just one of those things that could clue you into a potential electrical problem that you might be looking at having to repair. And I'm going to say that uh, I, I don't think the dome light function is working as intended in this vehicle. Lest we forget the seat belts. Um, quickly inspect these for any signs of fraying or damage. Um, also the buckles themselves. Make sure that they engage. Make sure that they disengage properly. Um, the good news about seatbelts is if you do find issues with seatbelts, um, many times the manufacturers have a lifetime warranty on seatbelts. So if you do find a seatbelt issue, call up the manufacturer of the vehicle that you're looking at and see if they... Uh, might offer a lifetime warranty on that and if they do um, let's say for instance I know on some Hondas that you'll see some chipping around this area in here and they had an update for that so you just replace the receiver end here so definitely check your seat belts and make sure they function properly and the driver's side is going to get used more than any so do a good inspection on that make sure that one's in good shape also once again the receiver make sure it locks in securely it doesn't pop out it doesn't feel like anything is going on here and then it releases properly